Hey, what's going on everyone? In this Master Grade review, we'll be taking a look at one of the more unique Xeon suits from the original Mobile Suit Gundam anime series, the YMS-15 Gyan. Now, the Gyan is one of those suits where you either love it or you hate it. Personally, I'm on the love it side. So when I saw this kit pop up at my local hobby shop at a reasonable price, I just had to jump on it. Now as always, we'll be reviewing this Master Grade Gunpla in four categories. The build, appearance, articulation, and the gimmicks. We'll be given each a score from 1 to 5, so at the end we can tally it all up for an average score. I'm really looking forward to seeing what this Gyan has to offer. Alright, now let's jump right into this build. With this kit coming out towards the beginning of what I unofficially call the version 2.0 era of Master Grades, this kit is essentially a 2.0 without a 1.0. It really has all the hallmarks of those iconic late 2000s kits, including simple yet well thought out part separation, an anime accurate approach to panel lines, and of course, a full inner frame. However, I will say the engineering of this inner frame isn't quite as in depth as the Zaku version 2.0, or even the Gelgoog version 2.0, that came out shortly after. It also lacks a lot of the frills from the Mark II version 2.0 that came out just before. Maybe it's because Bandai knew there weren't a ton of other uses for this Gyan's inner frame, but there's absolutely no moving pistons or sliding armor pieces here. What pistons we do get are actually molded in. A few of these key joints like the hips and waist rely on poly caps too. While there definitely is quite a bit of molded in detail to paint up, the engineering here is pretty bare bones. On the plus side though, this simplicity means that pretty much anyone of any skill level could build this frame. So even if you're a beginner, you have nothing to worry about here. Moving on to this armor, I did notice quite a few bad nubs, specifically a few on the side of the feet, one on the side of the leg, and a few on the arm. Other than that though, this armor separation is extremely solid, with everything molded in its correct color. Even this individual hatch in the chest comes in the right shade of light blue. Doing a custom paint job on this kit to hide some of these nubs would take absolutely no time at all. As far as painting and detailing goes, there really isn't a whole lot of mandatory stuff here. The only mandatory painting spot is of course, the pink mono eye. It's a separate clear piece, so it's a real easy paint job with a Gundam marker. You do get a sticker for it, but painting is so easy there's really no reason to use it. While we're on the subject of this mono eye though, my clear visor piece came warped for some reason. Probably just a bad pressing, but yeah, it never sits on the head right. Some people say he looks better with the visor removed entirely anyway, but eh, it's not for me. I'm probably just going to glue this visor down after this review. Now back to the painting, there are the usual small squares and dashes around the kit that look great with some black paint, at least if you're into the more consistent look like I am. While I was at it, I also used some black paint for this panel line in the elbow and in the knee. Lastly, back to this head. This top section on the cross is molded in, and the visor doesn't cover it. Thankfully, there is a bit of a channel here, so I ended up filling it with black paint, and it looks pretty solid. This Gyan's build was really simple, with no major issues. It's actually a little bit on the bland side. Still, it's a really solid build, deserving a 4 out of 5. Alright, now let's see if this appearance can give this kit the uniqueness that the Gyan deserves. Even in the original 1979 Gundam anime, the Gyan stands out with this really interesting medieval knight design. Thankfully, this kit does a fantastic job of capturing that aesthetic. Starting with these proportions, they're a little on the slimmer side, but not any more than the other One Year War 2.0s. Still, there's quite a bit of that anime style bulk remaining in these shoulders, waist skirts, and this flared out leg armor. All in all, this is a very solid silhouette. It's both modernized, but not too far off model. The colors on this kit are also really great. It just nails that pale purple base color. It's just light enough that black lining can stand out, but still retains enough saturation to pop in comparison to those other Xeon suits. I also really love this dark blue secondary color. While in the anime it was often more of a purple, at least in the original art, I really like the contrast this deep blue has with the purple base color. I do think if this kit went with the more 70s dark purple instead, this suit might have been a little too one note. I also really like the lighter grey used specifically for the backpack, the orangish yellow used for the beam saber and the shield, and this really nice crimson red used for the rim. These are just great colors all around. 
One aspect I've always appreciated about 2.0 kits is the more anime accurate approach to panel lines. And even though this isn't technically a 2.0, it still follows that aesthetic perfectly. You get just enough to spice up the design, specifically these legs, but not so much that they draw attention to themselves. This is just a great minimalist approach to panel lines. It also leaves enough blank space to add your own panel lines. As for the decals, you of course get the standard peel and stick caution signs. Nothing really out of the ordinary here. The dry transfers you get are really nice though, coming with quite a few numbers and Xeon logos. I really like that you get a dedicated model number as well. It's definitely going on the shoulder after this review. The appearance here is just phenomenal. It fits in perfectly with the other One Year War kits from this time period, with solid proportions, amazing colors, and a simple approach to panel lines. We've got to give this appearance a perfect 5 out of 5. Now let's see if his articulation can keep these high scores going. Starting with the feet, for once we actually get something kind of interesting. There's two joints in here that allow for a really great bend upwards. There isn't much of a heel though, so he does have a tendency to fall backwards. Next we have the ankles, which are a ball joint connected to a swivel with a massive hinge forward in between. I guess Bandai needed some way to get these feet out from this restrictive ankle armor. Unfortunately, you don't really get much side to side, meaning you'll rarely have these strangely shaped feet fully planted. Moving our way on up, the knee has a solid 135 degree bend. The back of the armor on this thigh does have a tendency to pop off though. The hips use the same setup as the Mark II version 2.0, so swivel below and a polycap on a ball joint above. Just like the Mark II though, this polycap isn't very strong, so he'll lean backwards if you're not careful. You'll often find him doing splits too. This compounded with his inability to have both feet planted makes for a very frustrating experience trying to pose this guy. He just keeps falling backwards. I'm probably going to have to use some sticky tack to keep him planted on my shelf. There is a sliding mechanism in the hips that allow the legs to move forwards, but it isn't much help given the locking mechanism is pretty weak. The legs will just pop out of place if you're not careful. Strangely though, moving on up we really don't have any other issues. These skirts function about how you would expect, but the back skirt is locked in place. The chest has a solid tilt thanks to a poly cap in the waist. You also get the usual spins here. On the other side of the chest, this backpack can tilt forwards and backwards. It's pretty unique. The shoulders here are just amazing. You get pretty much all the movement you could ask for thanks to some swivels inside the chest. They even rotate around this armor piece. Working our way down the arm, we have a fairly stable spin from the upper arm, an amazing 180 degree bend from the elbow, and the wrist around the usual ball joints. This kit uses the standard trigger finger split style hand, but the fingers have been slightly separated to look less toyish. I really like this look. They also have pegs too. Lastly on the head, you'd think this neck mechanism would be restricted due to the armor, but nope, you get some solid movement all around from a really deep ball joint. I'm less impressed with his mono eye though. Unfortunately, there's no way to move this eye from the outside. So every time you want to move it, you have to take the top piece off the head and mess with it. In general, this Gyan has some really solid articulation, at least from the skirts up. Really, the combination of these awkwardly shaped feet and the annoying hip setup is really frustrating. Still, this articulation was above average in pretty much every other respect, so we'll have to give this articulation a score of 4 out of 5. As long as you're patient and have some sticky tack on hand, you can get this guy into some pretty cool poses. Lastly, let's see what gimmicks are included here. First up is the main attraction, this light up beam saber. Yep, this beam saber includes a small yellow bulb that you build into the handle. Despite not being the brightest, it looks really amazing, especially in a dark room. As far as the build goes, it wasn't anything too technical. There are some contact pieces in here that you want to make sure you have lined up right, and there is one screw, but the whole build only took about 5 minutes. The on off switch can be a little finicky, but other than that there's really no issues. You do need to buy the battery separate though, it's a CR1220 battery. As far as the saber itself goes, you can hold it just fine thanks to a peg in the hands. There's also no weight issues here. Also, if for whatever reason you don't want to use the light up gimmick, this kit does come with an extra handle that excludes the light bulb. Next we get his iconic shield. It looks phenomenal, with great colors and tons of details. Having molded in needle missiles lining the rim is a really nice touch too. You can also remove this yellow piece to reveal his hide bombs underneath. They're actually separate pieces, so you can paint them up too. 
you attach this shield to the back of the arm, but unfortunately the connection isn't very strong, so it'll often slide down. It also doesn't help that this shield is extremely heavy. You're supposed to use a few hinges in the arm connection to fold the shield over the hand, but that's just not happening. I'm honestly surprised I managed to get this pose. It's pretty unfortunate because this kit actually comes with an effect part that makes it look like the needle missiles are firing out. It looks amazing. It makes me wish more kits came with effect parts. You can also attach the non light up beam saber inside the shield as well. In addition to the beam saber and the shield, this kit comes with three mines. I'm sure you could include these in some kind of diorama. Lastly, I don't usually mention these, but this kit comes with three, yes, three, statues of Makuve. Does Makuve have some kind of weird following or something? Anyway, that's about it for these gimmicks. While it does seem a little sparse, you just can't ignore some of these frills. I mean, the light-up beam saber is amazing, there's an effect piece, and you get some really weird extras. Unfortunately though, this shield is just a nightmare to work with. Still, in every other respect, these gimmicks are just amazing, deserving a 4.5 out of 5. Alright, now let's wrap this all up here. The build was a 4 out of 5. It's a little on the boring side, but still features a full inner frame and great part separation. The appearance was a 5 out of 5. It's a great mix of anime accuracy and some modernization. The articulation was another 4 out of 5. From the waist down, there's some issues, but overall you can get some cool poses here. And the gimmicks received a 4.5 out of 5. It's everything you could ask for, plus more. The shield is a bit of a letdown though. Tallying all that up, dividing, and of course rounding, this Master Grade Gyan receives a 4.4 out of 5. In terms of an unrounded percentage, it receives an 87.5%. That's a pretty solid score in my opinion. This Gyan was overall just a really solid Master Grade. Personally, I'm a really big fan of this kit's appearance. He just looks great next to the other late 2000s One Year War kits. The Light Up Beam Saber is also a great gimmick that I wish more kits would come with. While it was pretty frustrating getting this guy into some action poses, I think he's definitely a worthwhile addition to your shelf, especially if you're a fan of the One Year War. Alright then, feel free to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I post updates, work in progress builds, the whole deal. You can also leave any questions you have about this kit in the comments, and I'm more than happy to get back to you. Okay, thanks for watching, and see you next time.